What's up guys, JT here and welcome back to another long awaited installment of Tone Quest. Yes folks, before we begin, I want to thank each one of you for the patience that you have shown for this preset and for this video. You see the last few months have been a roller coaster of changes and challenges to say the least for me. First, as you may all know, the pickup selector switch on my Music Man stopped working and then somehow my Moto audio interface, which is FireWire, I know 2020 and FireWire, refused to work with my new PC right there. And then it was that time of the year again. November came and hay fever <laughs> hit me like a truck, like it does every year. And it has been really, really very, very tough. And that's probably one of the reasons why you're not seeing too many talking head videos from this channel at the moment. But, but things have been looking really, really good and I'm feeling much better and I have loads of content planned ahead for you guys. So make sure you always stick around for that. Now, a couple of quick shout outs and honorable mentions to Kev Govins and Glenn Bird, who have made a contribution towards the channel via a donation to my PayPal. So thank you so much for that, guys. And in case you are wondering how you can support the channel and you are feeling generous, you can go ahead and donate to my PayPal as well. The link is always in the description box below as well. All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at the preset breakdown for the guitar tone I used on the best of times guitar solo by the incredible and one and only Mr. John Petrucci. <laughs> so without further ado, let's dive in and dive it in. Now, if you follow the channel, you pretty much know the format of this video. I always like to give some background around the tone I am dialing in so that you guys can get an idea as to why I chose the things that I did. So when you think of Petrucci's tone, you know it's Mesa Boogie, right? There's no second thoughts on it. But here's the catch though. You see, in his career of playing the Dream Theater, John has possibly played through every possible Mesa Boogie amp that you can imagine. But not all of them, to be honest, most of them. In fact, at the time of recording this video, he already has a signature amp with the brand called JP2C. But I'm pretty sure that's not the amp which was used on this track, purely because this album dates way, way, way back. So, as with every Tone Quest preset, I started to scour the internet for clues and found some great tone and gear references for this album. Now, it's pretty clear to me, and I think most of you will agree as well, John has been a great fan of the Mesa Boogie 2C Plus right from the start. So, in my first reference, you can hear him talking about in this YouTube video right here, where he clearly mentions, as far as the amplifier, I used a Mesa Boogie Mark II C Plus on most of the album. I used the Mesa Boogie Mark IV on the album as well. And I was fortunate enough right towards the end of the recording to get my hands on a Mark V. Now he also goes on to elaborate and mention that there is one solo on the album which is played on the Mark V. Well, could it be this one? We don't know that, do we? <laughs> now, we do not have the Mark V in the XFX2, and I did try the Mark IV, but it did not get me close to the tone whatsoever. The next reference that I found is the isolated track for the solo. Now, you may ask, what is an isolated track? Well, Dream Theater has been kind enough to release isolated tracks of all their players and their instruments as special edition CDs from time to time. And people have been kind enough to put some on YouTube, and I found the isolated solo track of this particular solo on YouTube. Now, this changed everything. It was an absolute game changer for me. The link to the track will always be in the description box for you to check it out. Now, I don't know if you could, but I could hear some really subtle nuances that I do want to call out. Firstly, the tone is so damn smooth like butter. Mm. And I think that's mostly because of Petrucci's incredibly perfect picking and razor sharp accuracy. Now, that's a part that I cannot replicate, to be honest. <laughs> Second, I do hear a lot of modulation in there, some chorus, but also something else which is giving it a very unique sound that I've never heard before, to be honest. So you might ask, which amp is it? Well, I cannot say. To me, it sounds like a 2C+, to be honest, but I have been wrong earlier as well. 
and you're probably already asking hey gd what about the cab man it's half of the equation as you always say well if you do any research on the cabs that petrucci uses you will mostly conclude that he uses a traditional 4x12 rectifier cabinets with celestian vintage 30 speakers so i'm going to pretty much stick to those we have a couple of them in the xfx and those are stock and tone quest is all about keeping everything stock but keep in mind that there is a lot more that goes into his tone more than anything i can possibly think of or cover in a single video this video is an attempt to get close to the tone and not replicate it plus most of his tone comes from his incredible playing and his fingers which i possibly cannot have so hopefully we can get close to the tone boot up your axe effects and get your guitars out and let's dial it in Okay guys, so I've got Axe Edit loaded in front of me and as always I've got a blank preset in there with nothing in there so that you guys can listen to my DI guitar and see how interesting it sounds. <laughs> this is how it sounds. Now this is just to get you an idea of the levels of my guitar so that you might have to dial it accordingly as well. A kind gentleman requested me to show the input gate settings as well before I dial in any of the blocks and I want to call out that I usually keep it absolutely stock always, I do not change it. But just for reference, this is how it is looking like, that's the input gate before the signal chain and obviously we're going to use some more gates in between as well. So first things first, let's go ahead and add the amp. Now when it comes to the amp, I mentioned that obviously it's going to be a Mesa Boogie, but of what type? I was highly inclined towards the 2C+, Plus, but I kind of tried that a lot to make it to work, but I think I did not kind of end up liking the gain structure on that too much. However, I ended up using another amp from the XFX2, which is a Mesa Boogie of uh, Mesa Boogie type. Not a chorus, <laughs> what am I doing? Let's add an amp and let's go ahead and change this. I used actually a 2C++. Now you might say, oh, this is not the 2C+, this is not an amp that Petrucci uses. Well, if you think about it, a 2C++ is a modded 2C+, as far as I know. It was a modded amp from the 2C+, created for James Hetfield from Metallica. And I honestly like the gain structure of this amp quite a lot. It's not heavily different from the 2C+, but there's something unique about this amp that I like a lot. And you're always free to change it to 2C+, if you want to. I think... For me, the 2C++ works slightly more better. So we're gonna use that. And for the cabs, I'm gonna go ahead and add a cab block as well. I'm gonna change this to Stereo Ultra Res as we want to use two cabs. I mentioned that Petrucci usually uses a 4x12 traditional uh, rectifier with Celestian V30 speakers. We have those cabs in the XFX. It's these two 40F073 and F074 are two stock cabs which are pre mic and I think they are ML audio. So I'm going to use them and I'm going to not mic anything on here because as I said, these are pre mic with these mics. One of them is a 57 and 121 and one of them is 906 to 421. I think these are the mic ranges used as for the documentation. I'm going to keep everything in stock. Let's hear how the tone is sounding. <laughs> That's not sounding the tone we want, right? That's nowhere close. Obviously, it's nowhere close because you have to tweak a lot of things in the amp. We need more gain as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with the amp. I'm going to change a few settings in here. Now it's a Petrucci preset. Obviously, it's going to have loads and loads of gain. So we're going to add gain and I'm going to change the input drive to 9 and overdrive is going to come up as well to around 8. Now, if you watched any of Petrucci's videos and if you watched anybody else driving, dialing is kind of his tone. The trick with the Mesa Boogie amps is to kind of keep the mace and mids kind of low. And there's a reason for that and we're going to cover that later. So for now, what we're going to do is kind of bring down the bass to around 1.25. The mids also going to come down to around 2. The treble, I'm not going to push it too high. I'm going to keep it around 6. We want a sort of a smooth tone. And the presence is the magic control where it kind of adds a lot of more upper end and more, I think, brightness to your tone. And as Petrucci kind of talks about it, I think in his own words, I can quote him that 
you don't want to be splitting skulls in the audience. So for the presence, I'm not going to touch it too much. I'm going to keep it around 4.4. I think that's where I left it. And the master volume again is a sort of a tricky knob when it comes to the Mesa Boogie amps. If you keep it too low, your tone's going to get too thin. And if you keep it too high, your tone's going to get too bassy and muddy. So I think you have to find that sweet spot. And I think for me, I think in this case, I found the sweet spot to be around 8.7. And I don't think I changed anything else in the amp and we're going to talk about the GQ later but for now what I also did was I went into the power supply section and I changed the supply sag to around 5. Now this gives the amp a more squishy sort of a feel. There's tons of videos about it and you can read about it on the Fractal Audio forums as well. Just a setting that kind of helped me get there. So also in the cab I went ahead and cut out a lot of highs. I think I brought the high cut down to around 4,000 or something like that, 4,400. And also the low cut, I brought it up to, uh, up to around 90 hertz to cut out some of that, you know, low end as well. So this is how we're sounding now. Now I'm playing rhythm parts because obviously we haven't added the delay and you know it's not really justifiable to play lead tones over this kind of a tone yet. So it's not sounding really cool at the moment because it's obviously missing that modulation and it's missing that scooped mid sort of a thing that Petrucci likes to do and that's what we're going to do next. So let's go into the GEQ and you'll find a bunch of faders here staring at your face telling you oh move me up move me down but it's not going to be that simple. The moment you try to move these things up and down, your tone's gonna drastically change. Keep in mind that these are, I think, correlated to the gain. So any small movements can dynamically change your tone quite a bit. And I have been the victim of this. I have sat for hours and moved these faders up and down, but I can give you a handy tip. Use a looper in the beginning. And how to use a looper, you can check it out on my AxeFX workflow tips video. I talk about it in detail, but use a looper, record a part and then tweak them. You'll be saving yourself hours and hours of time consuming playing and also you'll save your fingers as well. <laughs> so for now, I'm just gonna dial in the straight up numbers and I've got these after thousands of trial and errors, but I think these are the ones that got me closest to the tone that I was looking for. Anywho, let's do this. 80 Hertz is gonna go up to 6.48. The shape we are looking for is kind of a V, so we add in a lot of bass and we also add in some treble, but we scoop out the mids quite a lot and that's gonna get us the kind of tone we're looking for. So for the 240, I am gonna push it down to minus 1.20. 750 is also gonna come down quite a bit as this is the main mids area. Not minus 840, it's gonna be 8.40 minus. Uh, 2200 is also gonna come down to minus 0.48. And 6600, I'm also gonna push up a little bit to around 3.36. Now these faders are going to be obviously gear specific as well. I'm playing a guitar of Petrucci's choice. This guitar is more mid based but in your case you might find that you might need to boost this in your fader up or down but for the mids you might find that you might need to add a little bit more mids because you know the tone might be getting too teeny at your end, but I think this works for me as such. So play around with those two faders. I think the rest I would, uh, you know, recommend you. If you want to touch them, use a looper and then touch them. So with that done, I'm not going to play right now. We also, I added a lot of more drive. I think in cases of Petrucci's lead tones, he usually likes to push the amp a little bit more further by adding a more drive. I think his JP2C has the signature shred feature, I think, which he can, you know, invoke by using his godlike powers and get more cane. But for us mortals, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a drive block and I'm gonna change this to a T808 mod. And as I said, I'm not looking to add too much gain. I'm looking to kind of add a little bit of more gain, push the amp a little bit more, and also add some tone. So for the drive, I'm gonna bring it down to around 0.5, and tone's also gonna come down to 3.4 or something like that. 
not too much harsh in terms of the top end and also the high cut I brought it down to 8800 so that some of that top end gets chopped off and also the level I pushed it up to 10. Now before I play anything I also added another gate block in here which is a new thing that I started doing in all of my presets. Uh, most of my high gain presets because it helps in cutting out of that some of that extra noise, string noise and that noise that usually comes with you know such high gain presets or high gain amps. Now I did not touch this too much in here. I'll leave the block in there so that you guys can tweak it according to you. But if your piece is getting too noisy, I would recommend change stuff over here, change the threshold or the ratio and to find that sweet spot which works for you. So for me, I kept it around minus 36 and the ratio I brought it down to 1.5 and the attack I brought it down to one millisecond because I want this to kick in as soon as possible. This is a trick I earned, uh, learned from, I think, Miko from ML Sound Labs. I think he has a video covering why you want to use a gate between your amp and a cab. It just gives you a more tighter signal chain and works well with high distortion amps. So I kept that in there and with that done, this is how we are sounding. You get the idea. So I think the tone is getting there. I think it's smooth and it's got that right amount of distortion and it's quite buttery the way we want it. So the next thing we're going to add is actually some modulation, which is the chorus, as I mentioned. Now, may, you may ask what chorus should we use? I think Petrochi is known for using his TC Electronics uh, chorus pedal, which we don't have in the Axe FX, but I Google a little bit on the forums. And to my surprise, I found our very own admin, Matt, actually commented on a forum post saying that the dimension effect type of the chorus was actually something that was created for Petrucci on his request, which, to be honest, blows my mind mind because now we are getting to use a chorus pedal or a chorus type of effect which actually Petrucci uses which is so awesome. Uh, what I did is I brought down the rate to as low as I can 0.11 this doesn't have too many repeats and then I changed it to sine I think I brought down the depth, depth. I think I brought down the depth to around 24% and the mix also I brought it down to around 12%. We don't want too much chorus in there. And the tone, I just changed the dimension more to high. I always do that. Now, the next thing that I added is a delay. Now, when it comes to Petrucci's delay, you will always find him talking about ping pong. I think that's his favorite delay type. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna stick to what he uses. Nothing very magical or fancy here. It's just gonna be a ping pong with the tempo set to a dotted eighth note is what he always uses. So I'm gonna use that. The tempo is around 82 BPM. Don't go, go by what Google says. This is, I think, the right tempo. It's 82 BPM and it's quite fast when it comes to the speed parts in there. It's very tough to play those. Anyways, feedback's gonna go up to 52% and the spread, I brought it down to 78%. The spread is how widely the kind of repeat spread out between your stereo speakers. So I kept it around 78%. So it's not gonna spread too much, but it's gonna spread enough. Mix, I'm gonna push it up to 24%. Now when you do this, what's going to happen is you're going to high feedback, which means you're going to get more repeats and the mix is also high. What's going to happen is that your delay repeats are going to be interfering with your actual tone and it's going to sound quite muddy. So have a listen to this. <laughs> Now you can hear that the delay is kind of really interfering with the playing and it's not very very clear as to what the real notes are and what the delay repeat notes are. To solve that is there's a trick that I've learned and I always use is that you go into the EQ section. Now you could use a ducking delay as well but in this case I used a EQ trick which I always do is which is that you get the high cut and you bring it down quite a lot. In this case, I brought it down to around 1900 hertz. What this will do is for the delay specifically, it's gonna cut off all that top end and it's gonna make the delay go back and sit in the background and it's not gonna disturb you too much when it comes to the actual uh, playing. So let's play some part. <laughs> I 
finally got a bit of it. Uh, that part is tough to play, to be honest, and took me a lot of practice. And in fact, it's been a while since I played this solo. It's been a while since that playthrough came out. But if you want to see me play it, right, go to the playthrough video and have a look there. All right, there's more to the preset. That's not, we're not done yet. There's one final thing that I always add, and it's called the Haas effect. Now, what is the Haas or Haas? I don't know how it's pronounced. I think it's called the Haas effect. What it mainly, uh, mainly talks about is that you take your stereo output and you take one of the channels, left or right, other way around for you because you're facing me, and you delay one of those channels by a few milliseconds. What that does is kind of gives a perception of width and it feels like there are multiple guitars playing and it always you know, kind of fills up, as Petrucci kind of calls it out, it kind of makes it sound huge and it makes it sound like there are more than one guitar playing in the band. So to replicate that effect, you can do it in your DAW and I have a separate video on that in the channel. It's called the seven millisecond secret sauce, <laughs> no longer a secret sauce anymore. Go and check that video out. I think it'll be helpful for you to understand the concept behind it. So in this case, what we're gonna do is you wanna go ahead and add a delay block and you wanna do this in a separate layer. Connect that layer up, obviously, with the main layer. Now, when you do that, the volume is going to go up. Obviously, we're going to fix that in a minute. Uh, make sure you use a digital mono for the delay. Bring the time down to 7 milliseconds and no need for any tempo or anything. The feedback needs to be zero. We don't want any repeats from this particular delay. Push the mix up to 100% and I'll talk about the level in a second. But since you've added another layer, your overall volume is going to go up. So come down to the main amp and get the master level and bring it down to around minus 13.4, not 103, minus 13.4. I really need to improve my typing skills here. <laughs> it's hard to do it with a pick in the hand all the time. Uh, it's minus 13.4, and with that done, this is how you're sounding. You might say, hold up, GD, that's quite a bit extreme. So this is where you can tame it down and bring down the level of the second delay that you added. I think minus 10, minus 11 kind of suits my ear the most. This kind of subtles down the effect quite a lot, but it's there and it definitely impacts your tone. So hear this out now. I think for a final touch, uh, now Petrucci doesn't use any reverb whatsoever. I don't think he likes it, but I, when I hear the mix of the actual track, I do hear some reverb in there. And I did add some reverb actually in the DAW. And I did not include it in the preset because I'm gonna put the settings up for the reverb here as well. Because I want this preset to be uh, not having reverb because Petrucci doesn't really use reverb, but uh, adding a touch of reverb there, I think it will make the preset sound even, even much more better. And I'll leave the settings on the screen as I said earlier. Well, that's pretty much it folks. That's the video and that's the tone. I hope you guys enjoyed dialing it in with me as much as I did. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about the tone and let me know what would you dial in differently if you would do so. I would always love to hear your suggestions and your feedback around the tone or anything specific around the content that I'm sharing with you guys. And in case you haven't already done so, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And in case you aren't subscribed already, please go ahead and do so if you'd like seeing more content like this. And and as always, until I see you guys in the next episode of Tone Quest, or for that matter, on any other video on this channel, make sure you stay safe, keep rocking, guys. Cheers, bye bye.